Hey folks, Todd Coburn with your Aerospace Structure series. Here's an example or another example of a solved problem with an eccentric load uh, on a fastener pattern. Let's say we have a fastener pattern that looks like this. Let's say we have a fastener, a fastener, and a fastener. We'll call this one, two, three. Let's say two, five, two, four, two, Let's say okay. Let's say we have this. All right. What are we going to do? Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to get the p x and the p y. That's just p cosine theta, p sine theta, right? No problem. Great. Now we have our two components of load. All right, what we're gonna to need to do is move those to the center of the fastener pattern. In order to do that, what we're gonna to need to do is find the center of the fastener pattern. So let's just start out by making our table. Looks like we're gonna have one, two, three fasteners. We're gonna put in our diameter of each fastener. Let's say this is a half inch, this is a one quarter inch, and this is a three eighths or something. So we have one half, one quarter, three eighths. We put these in as decimals. Next, what we're gonna to need to do is put in our coordinate system. Now we could use the lower left corner, but I like to use a lower left fastener. Why? All right, so what that means is if we look at this, what is our X component of each fastener? Number one is it zero, zero, because I define my origin through that fastener. Uh, the second fastener, it looks like it's at five, zero. The third fastener is at zero, four. Now we calculate the area of each fastener. That is just pi d over two squared, right? So we calculate this one, this one, this one, this one. These are going to have different values. We get our properties, A equals the sum of the A's, right? It's just this column right here. All right, now we calculate our X bar. That's the sum of the AX over the sum of the A and our Y bar, sum of the AY over sum of the A's. So this is, now we have our A times our X. So we're gonna multiply this times this. That's the sum of the AX's and we use that with the area to calculate our X bar. Our a i y i is just going to be the area times the y bar. Bing, 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 bing. Sum those up and we calculate our x bar, that guy. Okay. Next, we're going to say, all right, we're ready to calculate j of each, which means that the first fastener is going to be this area. And then we're going to have this x minus x bar, that x minus x bar, square that mother. We're going to have y i minus y bar. This is actually a one and this is one, right? This is not, this is Y bar, not that. Add those together. A I times this squared. That is gonna be the J and we do that again, again, again. Sum those up, that is the J of the pattern. Got that? Now we have our properties. So we're ready to continue. Uh, this is our, what do we have here? What is this? This is our J. Oh, I messed this up. This is all one entry here. J of I. Okay. Now we're going to calculate our shear stress in the X. We're going to grab our equation, which was just our PX over A plus, I think it was minus M. Uh, let's see, for X component, it's going to be Y minus Y bar, right? over I, we calculate our X component. 
We calculate tau y using my equation. Oh, we can't do that yet because actually what we forgot to do is we need to calculate the moment about the centroid. So what we're gonna to need to do now that we found the faster pattern centroid, which actually is gonna be right in here somewhere. So that means this is our X bar and this is our Y bar, right? Now that we found those points, now we're gonna to need to plug into my equation to calculate the moment, right? This had the X location and the Y location of the faster with the MZ, which was actually zero. We plug into that equation and that gives us the moment at the centroid, we could call it MO, right? That's the moment about here. So what happens is these two forces are gonna give you a moment. This guy is gonna give you a moment this way, your PX, and your PY is gonna give you a moment this way and the summation is gonna be this guy. So we're gonna end up with our forces, right? We're gonna have two components, a force of the centroid and we're gonna have a moment at the centroid. Now we use those with our tau X equation to get tau X of each. Those with our tau y equation to get tau y of each. Our tau resultant is just that squared plus that squared, square root of everything, bang, 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 bang. Our force in each fastener is just this stress times each area, bang, bang, bang. Oh, we only have three fasteners. Now, if we want our margin of safety for shear, we'd say, okay, what's our shear allowable of the fastener? So this margin of safety for shear will be that divided by S of each minus one. So we get a value for each fastener. Our margin of safety for bearing will be, we can calculate our FBRG, which is S of each over its diameter times the thickness of the plate there, right? And the margin of safety then is FBRU over FBRG minus one, put those in. If we have bolt bending, we'd say, okay, our eccentricity is just T1 over two plus T2 over two. So our moment in each fastener is just the S in each times its eccentricity of each. And then we can just calculate since each fastener is round with a certain diameter, FB equals MD over two over I of the fastener shank, right? I shank, uh, bolt shank. That's, and then we can write our margin of safety. That would be uh, uh, margin of safety for bolt bending would be FTU over F bending of the bolt minus one. And that could be in another column if we need bolt bending. So I hope you found that useful. Enjoy.